And the death toll from a prison fire is rising. New overnight, Iranian state media says at least eight prisoners died from Saturday night's fire. Dozens more were injured. We have some new photo, photos as well to share with you this morning showing a blacked and burnt out workshop inside the prison. Another shows shattered glass where the fighting took place. And then a third newly released photo shows blankets and belongings scattered throughout that area where the prisoners were housed. All of this comes as protests rage against the country's authoritarian regime after 22-year-old Masha Amini died while in police custody. Investigators say she was arrested for violating the hijab laws. Joining me now is Benham Bem Talablu, senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Uh, Benham Bem, thank you for being with us this morning. You know, as we as we look at these images, the Iranian government insists that this prison fire was caused by a riot. Uh, there are many who question the leg legitimacy of that report. Is there any way to really know what sparked it? Well, it's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, in essence, you know, this uh, explanation by the government of the Islamic Republic, in particular its judiciary, uh, is probably as good as the explanations they tried to give that ended up covering up uh, the death of Mas Amini uh, earlier this September. Uh, we know the kinds of people that the actual the regime actually does end up jailing in places like Evian Prison. There's a vast majority of them are political prisoners, and it's important for our audience to know, of course, that there are foreign nationals and dual nationals that are held hostage, held against their will in that institution. And because of all of this, and because of the vast human rights abuses that take place inside of that institution, uh, Evian Prison was actually sanctioned by the U.S. in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, uh, under human rights authorities. So so this is a notorious place where the regime carries out part of its hidden internal repression. Uh, it's got many different wards. And the latest news after the, the fact that the death toll had doubled is that some of the prisoners had been transferred out and families has not been able to get in touch with them. So if passed this prologue here, it's likely that the regime is lying, trying to cover up something. We know during videos that circulated earlier on Saturday uh, when news of the fire first went live, uh, that, you know, chants of death to the dictator were heard, that later on tear gas were de was deployed, and later on gunshots were heard as well. You know, we're going into week five of these protests, many of them led by women. Woman, life, freedom is what they're calling for. They're demanding equality. Will the Iranian government ever conform to these demands? You ask a very pivotal question because in many ways, part of the identity and, and part of the very public-facing uh, image of the government of the Islamic Republic is this mandatory veiling, this discriminatory practice of enforcing the hijab on all women uh, inside of that country. Uh, but these protests, while triggered by uh, anti-hijab uh, movements, are not sustained by only anti-hijab forces. In essence, they follow the trend that we've seen in Iranian society since 2017, which is when street protests pushed far away from seeking reform of the state to revolution entirely against the state. And that's why you've seen a wide, demographically, geographically, economically diverse uh, group of Iranians uh, protests hitting now and have hit actually all of Iran's 31 different provinces and show no signs of giving up. So while they're triggered and uh, by this gross imposition on women that is codified in the law of the Islamic Republic, which does treat women as second class citizens, it is sustained by these long standing grievances between state and society that starting in 2017 and sustained in different iterations of protests since then, let's not forget there were protests this May and then don't forget in November 2019, 1,500 people were killed by the security forces of the Islamic Republic and the Iranian people continue to come out and protest. So with these protests in week five, they show no signs of giving up anytime soon. This is really a critical juncture for the West to watch the chasm between state and society irreparably uh, split, uh, split in Iran. It does feel as though this one is different. Uh, Benham, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.